I hold Profilis back on YouTube to continue the description of the Farmy Profi GH27 wood chipping machine, okay? Let's go. In the previous video, I showed you the tractor side. I have described the main frame together with the PTO drive configuration and also the independent hydraulic unit. In this video, I'm going to cover the wall part that is the feeding side of the machine. Let's start from one of the most important feature of this machine, that is the conveyor chain. This is the point where you are feeding the material to the machine. You can do it manually as we do usually, but obviously you have to pay attention to the safety aspects. Or maybe if uh, during the chipping session you need to move a lot of material, very very big trunks, you may need a crane, an excavator, as we do sometimes. This GH27 machine is the ACC model, that stands for Angle Crane Conveyor. In fact, the material is fed to the chipper via 55 degree angle that actually maximizes the efficiency during the cutting procedure. Together with this feature, you do also have the hydraulic chain that is independently moved via an hydraulic motor down there. And it is really helpful when you have to feed materials like woodworking production wastes or also branches that are not going to enter easily as trunks do. Let's then explore some features of the conveyor crane that is one of the most important part of the feeding side. First of all, you do have a very robust frame together with the lateral side walls that are helping the material to go onto the conveyor actually. The wall system is then supported by a joint frame, very robust. Uh, you can find it underneath the conveyor, down there. The chains are very robust and uh, on the upper part, you, you can see very small teeth. They grab the wood and they are moving it toward the feeding entrance of the, the machine. There are two rotors on which chains are mounted. One rotor is the motorized one for motion and in the front and the other is mounted onto a moving plate that is used to adjust the chain tension. We have chosen this configuration because since we do work a lot with working production wastes and also branches, as I told you, they're not entering easily as trunks do into the feeding entrance, okay? So we are really, really happy about this system. Once the material has been placed here, it moves forward to the feeding entrance that has like an upper geometry in order to direct the flow of the material onto the two feeding rollers. Okay, I'm going to talk about them now. There are two rollers, the upper one and the lower one. By rotating or grabbing the material and pulling it towards the rotor disc. Notice their special geometry. Uh, the upper one is like uh, feet or let's say hooks on it. Okay, They are really effective because they can stick into the wood and they're grabbing it and moving it very easily. The lower roller, on the contrary, has linear plates on it. The end tip is not as exactly like a sharp knife, let's say, but it is really similar to a blade. And a detail, very important detail about this, is that these blades are alternated. One is used for forward motion and the other is used for backward motion because there are situations, I'm going to talk about that, in which you just want to move far away from the rotor the wood, so you need to retract it from the feeding end. Okay, so you have to invert the rotation direction of the rollers. Now, the red rollers that you are seeing in the video are those original, okay, but at that moment we have mounted homemade ones that are specifically designed in order to work with working production weights. The lower one is completely flat because we don't want tiny places to stack into, into the lines, and the upper one has very sharp and non-aligned hooks in order to grasp uh, very easily flat materials like woodworking production. Both these rollers are moved by two independent hydraulic motors. The oil pressure comes from the hydraulic group in the front uh, that I showed you in the previous video and it goes directly to the electrovalve group that selects the motion direction and also the speed of rotation for the rotors. Another very interesting aspect about the rollers is the frame on which they are mounted. It is a very big and robust frame and it is pinned in one point, so it is able to move up and down in order to accommodate different wood sizes, okay? And in order to be sure that it is always kept down in contact with the wood, there are two big springs that are keeping it down, obviously. Once everything is working, the wood is pushed against the rotor and the wood chip is produced, okay? But this has been covered in the previous video, so I'm not going to bother you again. 
At that point, I have talked about the steel part, let's say, something that you can touch. Let's now talk about the software part, the electronic part. That is actually how the machine works. The chipper accepts three commands. Move forward, that is actually feed material in. Move backward, that is retract everything. And obviously stand still, that is do nothing. To send these commands, there are two solutions. The first one, the original, the one that we also had in the previous model of the chipper, is the cabled one. You do have a selector with uh, three live contacts and you select what you want to do. But you do have also this long cable that is inside the material or in the worst case, it went under the excavator tracks. So it was always broken, okay? And so this was not the optimal solution. What we do have now here is the radio control. You have a transmitter. It is a very small transmitter with uh, three selectors and you do have a receiver on the machine that is actually selecting the direction of motion, giving commands to the electrovalve group. Another electronic element is the small display that you have in the cabin of the tractor, where you do see parameters and more importantly, the speed of rotation of the disc. In fact, back there, you do have a small sensor that measures the rotations. Last but not least, I'm going to tell you about the smart feeding system that is implemented by the control unit. The smart feeding system controls the rotation speed of the disc. The rotating speed of the rotor varies during the chipping session. This is because maybe you do feed too much material or you do have big trunks that are going to load too much the engine of the tractor, okay? In order to keep as much constant as possible the rotation speed, this system is going to control the frequent starts and stops the speed of the feeding roller. Then, when the speed is restored, the forward motion is again activated, okay? And you can proceed with the chipping session. Okay, this hence the description of the feeding side. I covered also in this video almost all the details about that part. Please let me know in the comment if you have any curiosity or any observation about what I said. I hope that this video was interesting and also helpful for you. So thanks for watching and subscribe. Bye.